Hello, this is Chapter Twenty Six, talking about phylogeny and the tree of life. So let's get started. So basically, what happened is when scientists found a lot of organism, they kind of start losing track of like, oh, what's this one? What's this one? So in another word, they need to find a system to name each organism. For example. Uh, we call like human world. We call a piano piano because, um, well, it started with piano forte, but then the name catch on, and then so on and so forth. Because we name them specific thing, we know exactly what we're talking about. Scientists needs that system too, so systematically, um, they have to classify the organism in order for them to. To kind of recognize what they are, as well as、um, describe the evolutionary relationship amongst them. So, for the systematics, we actually have two different ways to name organisms. One is taxonomy, so just from classification of different characteristics.、Um, the other one is phylogeny, phy- phylogenetics. So basically, this is from like their evolutionary evidence. Okay, so let's get jump into it. Um, before we talk about the taxonomy and phylo- phylogenetics naming system, um, there are three tools that help us to figure out okay which one is more evolutionary related closely, uh, than the other one. So for example. The three tools are well. The three tools, not for example, not yet. Three tools are fossils. Basically, look at fossil. We can see like, oh, this one comes first. This one comes later, and this kind kind of comes at the same time. So they're probably genetically related, or um, at least historically related, based on the fossil layout.、Uh, another thing, it's morphology. So how does multiple animal have similar structures? For example. When does the animal have start having a jaw that it can open mouth, so like humans, so can talk. Another one, number three, molecular evidence. Basically, they take out their DNA, extract the DNA for whatever organism they're studying, and they compare the DNA sequences. Okay, using the sequences comparison, they will be able to see like, oh, okay, so this one. Has changed at、uh, location number one, location number two, and location number three, and so on and so forth.、And、this way, they're able to track how、uh, what's the changes、um, within the DNA sequences. So they kind of construct a picture like this. Okay, but we we're not gonna worry about that right now. So this is na- naming system taxonomy.、Right? So basically, we're naming an organism. And because modern technology, I mean modern technology, modern science has a lot of complicated animals and organism. So the scientific community came together and agreed that we were going to name every single species by using the genus and the species. Okay, so every single organism you see would have two names, sort of, kind of like first name and last name, and this why we'll. We will. We can able to see the name, and then s- see which genus is from, and see which species it is. So this is what we kind of pin down. Ah,、uh, you will see a lot of these name italicized, so that kind of helps you to know. Oh, that's that's the name. So this is the order from top to bottom. Top is the most, the biggest ca- category. The The bottom one is the smallest category. You have to memorize this. Okay, life, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Okay, there are a few ways right here that you can you can figure out which one you like, or you can create your own. But you have to memorize these. Okay, now this is kind of the the more confusing part. Okay. The other part was taxonomy, basically using name to categorize different animal. This one's phylogenetic tree. So we have this tree-like diagram that branches to show the evolutionary history, and this is very interesting because we have oh 
Next slide. We have different technique, but of drawing this tree to represent exactly what we want to say. For example, these are the few points that are extremely important to this tree. So, we have this branch point right here. Okay, that means there is a common ancestor for whatever organism this taxon G is, alongside with all these other things, okay? And then they spread, they split apart at this point, far, far, far back, okay? So this is branch point. Whenever this is dot, uh, this is called branch point, okay? Branch point also is talking about where the line lineage diverge, okay? So they used to have an ancestor right here, but then the, some somehow through evolution process, their genes becomes really, really different. So they kind of split into two species. And then two species split up more, split up more. So every single time you have a branch point, you're talking about the splitting of the animal. Okay. This branch point forms a polytomy. Okay. This is really weird. This is kind of one thing that's kind of weird because for here, it's a very clear diverse diversion of two species okay you start with one and you split into two very clearly for this point you not not really splitting into two very clearly because you have this third species kind of connect them all but not really they haven't really understand how what what kind of pattern causes diversion so they draw a straight line and they still say okay there are distinction distinction between these two so we're gonna divide them up like this but this one it's not resolved yet so they usually draw it this way okay basal taxon basically talks about something that was um split a long time ago sister taxon it's talking about well they're following the one huge tree and then they kind of branch out and eventually they are most related as far as the entire tree goes. Okay. Another thing we need to know is cladogram. Clado cladogram. Cladogram basically talks about it's this it's very similar to this one, but they draw it in this style. Talks about a clay. Clay is kind of like a huge group. Okay. And then there are basically it's the same thing. Gram. Well graph. You know, cladogram. Um they're talking about exactly the same thing, showing which groups of animals are kind of belong together. So it's like the tree, but it's drawn this way. Okay. And then this is usually using characteristics to categorize organism, excuse me. So the groups of species, they will share one ancestor. Okay. And everybody in this clay would have a very common uh, structure or feature or characteristic. Okay. And so on and so forth. Everything beyond this first point, first branch point, if you want to. Um, they will have similar characteristics. So, for example, everything beyond this point would have four legs. Okay, so salamander has, turtle has, leopard has. So that's cladogram, cladogram. Okay, this is a more confusing part, and uh, if you don't understand, you have to ask us because you will see this kind of questions on AP exam. Well, definitely on our tests. Okay, so monophyletic, paraphyletic, and polyphyletic. Okay, this is very confusing. We're talking about trees. Okay, branches. Monophyletic talks about when you have one ancestor and you have multiple species, and this is included. So whenever we're talking about monophyletic group, a clay, you're talking about, uh, how do I say this? Grandparents, parents, and then your son. I mean, you and then your son's daughter. Okay. So it has like a distinct family tree, including the ancestor. Okay. Paraphyletic doesn't include every single of you or your 
sons and daughter. So it has your grandparents as your parents. Okay, and mine might not include you or your brother or sister. Just include one of you, one of you, and then some of your offspring as well. Okay, so it's missing something. Polyphyletic is talking about just the individual organism. Okay, just individual organism. For example, just talking about your offspring, your sons or daughter, or your brother's sons or daughter, very small. Okay, this picture is kind of confusing, so I actually insert another one. Um, this one. Okay, monophyletic it covers basically everybody within that tree. It does. It can be this big, or it can be this one, or it can be this one. Okay, either way. Okay, polyphyletic. Oh, it changes the order. Polyphyletic basically covers just a species, a few of them, a few individual ones. Okay, and paraphyletic covers the ancestor, but it doesn't cover every single descendant. It doesn't cover every single. One. Okay, this one does. See, if you start from B, you have C, F, and the others. This one just start from A, you go to I. Doesn't cover B, doesn't cover C, F. Go to I, go to J, K. Okay, so this is kind of how you distinguish different groups. If you don't understand, come ask us. Okay, constructing a phylogenetic tree. This is kind of like example, so you guys just will be able to know. Um, I'm. I will also record another one to see, like, just kind of like a practice example, so you guys will be more comfortable with this. So these are the characteristics. Okay, the one that has more characteristics, it's gonna be more. Um, how do I say? More events in a way. Okay. Because it's gonna have more characteristics to move to work on. The more the one that has le least characteristics, it's gonna be more primitive. Okay, so for the first one, since this one has zero, you see we separate one group for it. The next one we separate. Next one we separate. Every single time you increase your characteristic, you basically has a branch point. Okay, and eventually leper has all these characteristics, and then therefore. Leopard is by itself, but right here. So basically, you look at the cable and you basically count however many characteristics the ant the organism has, and then you kind of draw it from that point. And the branch length this can represent genetic changes. Okay, so this tells you Drosophila has a lot of genetic changes throughout millions of years. Or however many years this whole thing was supposed to represent. Versus mouses, mouses haven't had that much genetic changes to, um, throughout the times that they exist. Neither is human. Chicken has a little bit more. Frogs has a little bit more. Zebra fish has more, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this can represent how many time, how long has the genetic information been changed. Okay. Branch length can also indicate time. Okay, like I said, how long? Okay, but this is more specific, talking about how long has it been that way. So, for example, this one says million years ago. So Drosophila, basically fruit fly, um, apparently according to this one, it has been around for about five hundred forty-two million years. Okay, versus human. About sixty-five point five million years. Okay, so this can also represent time. It depends on how they want to represent it, and they will usually in indicate that in the graph. And uh, th these are the few ways phylogenetic tree can be drawn. Just want to show you guys, so don't be scared. And I will show you. I'm gonna stop right here, and I will show you guys. Another video, this one's gonna be quick, and now we'll do some more examples. See y'all.